Hey, my name is Shu Ti, and due to pending litigation, we're gonna step outside of our usual routine to take a look at this, the Mojo Tone Tweed Champ F51 Amplifier Kit. It's a very fun DIY amp build kit, and it's the perfect choice for someone who's been crushing pedal builds and is looking for something a little bit more challenging. Today, we're gonna check out the Lone Control, listen to some sound samples, and then we're gonna cover some of my build notes. Included in those build notes is gonna be some modifications that I made to the amp, as well as a step-by-step -step for some of the initial chassis testing procedures. Hopefully this will make you feel more confident when you go and plug yours in for the first time. I'll wrap it up with my final thoughts on the amp. The controls on the champ are as simple as it gets. I'm going to mention some items that this amp doesn't have to start. There's no standby switch, dedicated power switch, or tone controls. The amp is turned on by using the volume pot. It'll click on somewhere between the one and the two. I let the amp warm up for about five minutes before turning it up past the point where it turns on. There are two input jacks. Special thanks to Andy from Denver on the TDPRI form for explaining how these work. Jack one is the full volume jack. When you plug in here, the signal sees both 68K resistors in parallel for a path of 34K to the first stage grid. If you plug into input two with nothing in input one, the signal sees a voltage divider with a path of 68K to the first stage grid and 68K to ground. This pads the signal down and makes it sound darker. Essentially, this provides a six decibel drop in signal. My understanding is that Leo Fender never intended anyone to use input two by itself. Musicians would use input one and two for an instrument and a mic respectively. At the end of the day, you're never going to use input two. All right, let's see how it sounds. My guitar today is a Fernandez Strat with Stonewall pickups in all three positions. My amp today, it's, it's the Mojo Tone 5F1. I've already put a couple years of playtime into this build, so the speaker is nice and broken in. Let's start by getting some nice, pretty clean tones at a lower volume. I'll be using the neck pickup for this. <laughs> Now let's crank up the champ to get some tube distortion. Finally, let's try something in between. We'll use the neck pickup at a higher volume. It's crunchy, but not fully distorted. Before starting the build, let's talk about danger. I stole this directly from the Mojo Tone manual. Electronics can be dangerous and must be treated with respect. Any circuit that works with 120 volt AC power from an electrical outlet is especially dangerous and could potentially kill you. Be safe and tinker at your own risk. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about some of the parts included in the kit. 
The NOS 771 output transformer is a nice, solid, USA-made transformer. The NOS naming convention of this might lead you to believe that this is a new old stock part, but it's not. It's a modern production part made for Mojo Tone. Now onto the speaker. My kit from 2019 came with a Celestian 815. The new kit comes with a Mojo Tone Anthem. Each of these ceramic speakers are 8 inches with a 1 inch voice coil. The Celestian has a slightly heavier magnet. Looking at the frequency response curves for each of these speakers, you'll see that there are some differences. I can say from experience that the Celestian is great. I'm sure the Mojo Tone speaker is awesome as well. Another speaker option would be the Alnico Jensen P8R. The P8R would have looser lows and a smoother overdrive. This kit uses an eyelet board. The provided eyelet board is perfectly sufficient for the job at hand. I've since completed builds using turret boards, and I have to say, I find a good turret board both visually pleasing and sexually arousing. This kit ships with a set of JJ tubes, which are fine. Maybe we'll get all bougie in another video and compare modern and new old stock tubes. Here are some modifications that I made to this amp. Let's talk first about the RCA speaker jack set. This piece of junk sucks. I had a hard time soldering this to the wires and getting it to work correctly. You might have an easier time putting this together than me. I got frustrated and I opted to replace the output jack with a standard quarter inch TS female jack. I then soldered a quarter inch male TS jack to two wires which I soldered directly to the speaker terminals. The V1A cathode bypass cap is a common and straightforward mod. This 25 volt cap is used to decrease local feedback and increase the gain of the 6V6GT power tube. My understanding is that this cap wasn't on the schematic for the original 5F1 but most Fender Champs shipped from the factory with the bypass cap installed. At the end of the day, this boosts the amp's gain. You can set this cap up on a switch if you want to be able to take it in and out of the circuit. Thanks to Rob Robinette's website for the details about this mod. I highly recommend Rob's page for people looking to learn more about amp building and amp mods. I experimented with the bypass cap on a switch at first so that I could experiment with what it sounded like before and after. I decided that I liked it with the bypass cap, so I decided not to put it on a switch. If you decide to keep the bypass cap on a switch, you're probably going to end up drilling a hole in the stainless steel chassis. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's completely doable. Just keep in mind that you'll need to be patient and use the right tools for the job. Let's cover some of the steps in the initial chassis testing procedure. You should make sure that you cover all of the steps in the Mojo Tone Guide. What I'm going to cover here are the parts that made me the most nervous when I first fired up the amp. We're going to wear safety glasses because I'm afraid of everything. First, we're going to power up the amp without the tubes installed. Set your multimeter to AC voltage. Check the power transformer secondary AC voltages at the tube socket. This will be pins 4, 5, and 9 on the preamp tube, and pins 2 and 7 on the 6V6. The voltage here should read around 3.3 volts. If the reading is zero, shut the power off immediately and look for a short in the heater filament wiring. Now turn off the amp, install the tubes, and plug in the speaker. Turn on the amp and let it warm up for about 10 seconds. Keep an eye out for smoke. If you see anything, shut down the amp and disconnect it from the wall socket. Before doing any kind of troubleshooting, check the filter capacitors for DC voltage and make sure that they are drained. If you read voltage here, wait and check the filter caps again later. Next, you'll set your multimeter to its highest DC voltage setting. Attach the ground probe to the chassis. I use alligator clips to hold it firmly in place. When checking voltages, you should only use one hand. The reason is you want to prevent a deadly hand-to-hand -hand shock path, because in between your two hands is your heart, and you don't want any extra electricity there. That said, we'll take our red probe in a single hand to measure the voltage at pin 8 on the rectifier tube. We're looking for around 370 volts DC here. 
Now you'll check the voltages at the other test points on the board using the same procedure. The values at these test points can vary by plus or minus 20%. If you see anything beyond that, you should go back, double check your components, and see if something was soldered into the wrong location. So who is this amp for? I think that a Champ is a perfect solo practice amp. You can play it at bedroom volumes and you don't sacrifice clarity or dynamics. If you pair this with a reverb tank, you have pretty much everything you need. And the 5F1 takes pedals really well, so you'll have no problem adding additional effects. I don't think this would be a great amp for band practice. It's gonna break up and distort when you finally get it to the volume where it's audible in the mix. I think that this amp's dynamics and tone lend itself really nicely to finger picking. Sometimes when you crank it into distorting, it can sound a little blown out. So you need to find that sweet spot between volume, distortion, and just having it absolutely fall apart. I definitely recommend the Mojo Tone 5F1. It's a really nice DIY kit and a great entry point into amp building. Keep it real guys, and remember, good prostate health is good overall health.